What's in a theatrical career? Not money, that's for sure. So what is a career in the theater like? Everyone has a different kind of career path, and I'm not here to tell you which is the right one. I will tell you my career path, which has been a rather interesting one. I started drama when I was in high school. I had an African-American teacher who was kind of crazy, but extremely passionate. Her method of exciting us in the rehearsal room was to throw her shoe at us. Yet at the same time, she valued diversity. One of our first acting exercises would be to perform a scene that was about our culture and also perform a scene about someone else's culture. She started the importance of diversity in theater for me. Then I went to Fullerton College where I got a fantastic theater education and then transferred to UC Irvine where I got to expand that and actually utilize my skills. At UCI, I kind of noticed the lack of diversity in the programming, so I decided to start my own theater company. I called it Diversity University Irvine. So, DUI. I don't know why I did that. Uh, it wasn't like we were getting drunk all the time or anything. But while I was there for two years, I produced seven shows and directed four of them. And I passed the company down to some other undergraduates who continued it for a year after I left. So following that, for eight years, I held administrative positions in theater. I worked for the LA Stage Alliance, which is a service organization that catered to the over 200 theater companies in Los Angeles. They host the Ovation Awards and got to do the ticketing for that, which was kind of fun and kind of a nightmare. After that, I was the PR marketing manager for East West Players for three years. Now East West Players is the nation's preeminent Asian American theater company. It's been in existence for almost 50 years and in a lot of the works that I performed, produced, and directed in, those Asian American works started at East West Players. It's really interesting to grow up reading plays and seeing originally presented at East West Players and then start working for that company. The same thing happened after I left East West Players and I was working at South Coast Repertory. I was their communications associate for three years. They're located in Orange County and they host the Pacific Playwrights Festival, and they are a huge champion of new work. Every single year, they do between two to five new plays on their stage. That is incredible. So many companies are producing works that have already been tested, been popular on Broadway, been done several times, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I enjoy good classic or even recent contemporaries that have interesting twists to them. But it really takes a lot of faith in the work and your audience to put up something new, something that hasn't been tested before. Because you don't know if everyone's gonna love it or everyone's gonna hate it. And if people don't like it, the word of mouth doesn't spread and then the show doesn't do well in ticket sales. And as much as you'd like to just be doing art, it is still a business, you still need to make money, and a company still needs to function. Now during these eight years that I was an arts administrator, I was also a director. I was a part-time director, which meant I was directing a show or reading maybe three or four months out of the year. This year usually meant working for about eight to nine hours during the day and then rehearsing another four to five hours in the evening with a drive in between. But as of March of 2013, I quit my full-time job and I decided to become a full-time director. It means I'm still putting a lot of hours in and I'm not getting any money for it. <laughs> I've had enough really amazing theater professionals come see shows that I've directed and tell me that they're really great, that I really need to start pursuing this. So I know that I'm good enough. I just need to refine my skills, have those amazing connections, and have a resume that's gonna blast you out of your pants. I'm trying to imagine right now someone reading my resume getting blasted out of their pants. And the past year has really done this for me. I've been an assistant director on five shows in major theater companies, worked with Tony Award winning director Pam McKinnon, spent a month up here in Oregon assistant directing. The scariest thing about this freelance life is I don't know what I have next. Thankfully for me, things have just been popping up, but it hasn't been without hard work. Every single month I'm sending out applications, I'm sending out resumes. When you're a freelance artist, you kind of just have to constantly stay ahead of the game. Just because you have one job doesn't mean you can't stop looking for the next. I I've been thinking about this a lot the past couple of weeks because my time here at Ashland is almost over. And at least four or five times this past year, I've constantly been debating whether I made the right choice or not. But I turned to one of my good friends, Cameron, and they asked me, why are you an artist? It wasn't because I wanted to make money. It wasn't because I wanted to become famous. It's because I want to make a change in the world. I believe creating theater is all about creating experiences. And when you create special experiences for people, it changes how they view the world. They have an emotional connection to something that opens their view point on how they can live their life or how they can see other people's stories. The world is such a crazy and complex thing. If we can share stories that change people, that's what I want to be doing. Sometimes it's not about what you want to do, but as an artist, sometimes it's what you need to do. And I believe I have a responsibility to create great art in this world. That's my advice to you. If you know in your heart something is important, follow it. Until next time, folks.
plates.